University College London Hospital's Foundation Trust is one of the largest in the UK. It treats over 60,000 inpatients and 400,000 outpatients per year across multiple sites. It's a research and teaching hospital and has access to the most up-to-date practices and expertise available. As a result, UCLH is able to bring many disciplines together in order to review and improve patients' conditions. The Haematology Service within the hospital is a world centre of excellence in the treatment and care of patients over the age of 13 for blood cancers. These include leukaemia, lymphoma, myeloma and inherited disorders such as sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. So much so, a brand new replacement building with state-of-the-art facilities is being built just around the corner and will be operational from April 2012. We have one of the largest haematology and bone marrow transplant services in Europe and some of the best survival uh, statistics uh, nationally. Uh, as a result of this, uh, many hospitals send patients to us from all over the country. The nursing staff here are very specialised and we have a number of specialist nurses who are recognised nationally uh, as experts in their field. Since 1993, its charitable fund called the Leukaemia and Lymphoma Unit Fund, has enhanced patient stays and made their experience more tolerable as they undergo treatment in this NHS unit. The fund aims to improve the experience of patients while they're on the unit with additional state-of-the-art medical equipment, amenities, free complementary therapy for patients and relatives and postgraduate education for nurses. Typically, we treat our patients between 6 to 12 months um, and our aim obviously in that period is to help them cope as best as possible with what can still be quite painful and debilitating anti-cancer treatments. Key to that is the critical use of certain machinery, much of which has been bought or supplemented by the fund. On this apheresis machine, stem cells are extracted and returned for bone marrow transplants. The machinery is paramount in treating patients with a rare and life-threatening blood disorder called TTP. Plus, it gives life-saving red cell exchanges to patients with sickle cell anemia. This is an apheresis cell separator. Uh, it's the newest model of its kind on the market. The thing that is so special about it is that it has a camera within the centrifuge, which gives us greater accuracy and more efficiency, and it helps to identify the cells more accurately when we're doing harvest procedures or exchange procedures. So at UCH we currently have nine machines, one of which is the Optia. Uh, the other machines are the Cope Spectrum. They're the oldest machines on the market, and although we have had them for a very long time, the company will no longer be able to support them. In the future, in the new cancer centre, we're also increasing our apheresis services from six beds to eight beds in the day unit. Uh, so not only do we need to upgrade all of our machines, but we need to increase our volume of machines. So we're going to have to condemn eight machines in total and increase our quantity of apheresis machines to 11, which means we need to buy 10 at £50,000 each. The pulse oximeter is a machine that measures oxygen in a patient's blood. The oxygen levels are very important to be measured because they will tell us if a patient is going hypoxic, which means that they are lacking oxygen to their brain or their major organs. Infection uh, can be spread on equipment as well as the local environment, so it's important that we have a pulse oximeter for each patient that comes to our ward. A new yet extremely effective method of treating patients has been the ambulatory care service. Chemotherapy and hydration is administered through a backpack powered by a CAD prism pump, some of which are provided by the fund. So ambulatory care enables patients that are having inpatient um, regimens to actually receive their treatment in a daycare environment um, and at night they reside in a local hotel which is a cost effective measure to the hospital and it enables us to actually treat more patients um, through the service. It means that patients treatments generally don't get delayed because they're not waiting on an inpatient bed um, and at the end of the day it is more cost effective to have a patient through ambulatory care than it is in an inpatient bed. I can come in and go as I please really, you're free to do what you want as, as long as you feel okay. It gives you the sort of luxury of being able to go to the cinema, you've been to the cinema, going for a nice meal in restaurants, lots of local restaurants nearby and lots of, um, sort of coffee houses. The fund has also provided television sets, 
a helpful resource that offers distraction. In addition to the conventional treatment, the unit offers free complementary therapies to patients and relatives, partly thanks to the fund. These include aromatherapy massage, Reiki and reflexology. I think almost everybody that I go and see in, in the hospital and who comes as an outpatient wants to come back after having one session. It also helps um, the, the sensation of pain, diminution, it helps people with digestive problems. Then there's times when they may be having a specific procedure um, that they, they might be quite nervous about. So we often go and see them before, before that happens. That might be a bone marrow transplant, for instance, or it might be um, a bone marrow aspirate. They're, they're, they're not always pleasant procedures, and so it helps when they are a bit more relaxed beforehand. I have severe numbness in my left and right leg from the knee down to my big toes, and while I'm having treatment, it alleviates and lasts for hours, maybe several days before the effects of the numbness start coming back again. The emotional impact of having a life-threatening disease can have a significant effect on not only the patient but also on their family. Staying overnight can help alleviate this, but hotels in London are expensive and many relatives prefer to sleep in the room close to their loved one. The fund has helped with seating cushions and pop-up beds to make their stay more comfortable. To complement the teaching side of UCLH, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Unit annually supports nurses' postgraduate education. This gives nursing staff added specialist skills that in turn help other nurses as well as patients. The course I did was a bone marrow transplant course, and um, which is a course that is beneficial for the transplant unit that we have here for patients having a stem cell transplant. And this was actually funded by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Charity. Um, and again, this course has helped me to develop and to give better care to my patient on this ward here. Many people donate, fundraise, and meet for the occasional social too. From charity bike rides, sponsored walks, marathons, triathlons, and all manner of exertions. Or, if you're like me and would rather enjoy something a little more sedate, like charity musical evenings or auctions, well, you might even see a celebrity or two. And there's always a need for additional tools, equipment, and facilities, the list of which is exhaustive. Couldn't recommend more highly enough don't have to worry about a thing, the nurses are there to help you and if you ask them a question they're quite willing to uh, answer your question. Just their whole ethic is quite, they just aim to be very accommodating. They're very good, very attentive, always come around looking after you. I mean, I'm not saying it's a wonderful experience having cancer but if you've got, a, if you've got cancer and, you, and, you're, and you're, under, you're lucky enough to be treated here then you're in the best place I'm sure in this country. All donations are gratefully received. Send cheques made payable to UCLH Charity 0099. And for UK taxpayers, state your donation is a gift or fill in the downloadable gift aid form. That way, the fund can claim an additional 28%. Please help us continue supporting patients. <laughs>